There's two reasons I want to make this shirt. Firstly, pin collar chambray shirt seemed cool. I would like to make designs that are like classic menswear details with workwear kind of fabrics in like a casual kind of construction, something a little more easygoing. And secondly, I wanted to continue my experiments with using suit canvassing inside of a shirt. You see, when you make a shirt, like especially with the collar and cuffs, you need a stabilizer or stiffener of sorts. And this is either a fusible glued on stabilizer or one that kind of floats in between the layers that's held in place by the stitching that goes along the edges. I've heard of all sorts of crazy combinations of methods used in like the collar, for example. You can use the floating layer and then just the fusible at like the tips of the collar to create that kind of nice roll, just fusing at the front with nothing in the back, while allowing to throw my hat into the mix for stupid shirt construction because I pad stitched suit canvassing into the collar and cuffs of this shirt here. Now, that's not a normal thing as far as I've seen, but let's not get carried away thinking that I'm doing something entirely unique here. Suit canvassing has some kind of interesting and unique properties, uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. First things first, we need to start with the shirt construction. Well, first we're actually starting with the pattern. The previous shirt that I made was a touch tight, don't forget the weights, so I marked how much extra I needed to add along the side seam of this front panel. Tracing the original pattern onto new paper and tracing a new curve with the wrong side of my ruler because I'm rebellious like that. Here we can see I needed to add a little bit more around the midsection and less at the hips and chest. I realized late that I forgot to film the sleeve, so here it is. I've drawn a line for the sleeve placket, though I really should get a slotted punch to mark it instead. And one seam has a slight curve which I added to maybe provide some ease around the elbow. No idea if it actually works or not. The sleeve opening is straight. I've seen some that are curved, but I keep the bottom flat and curve the edge of the cuff instead. The front curves more aggressively to keep the silhouette clean, while the back has some extra ease for movement. For the back panel, I needed to add the same amount at each point, so rather than redraw the curve, I'm just going to expand the entire panel. I'm getting some new paper, cutting it to size, and then folding it in half. Then placing the old pattern folded on top one centimeter away from the fold and tracing. And then we have a new, wider back panel. Now we can start with the fabric, and I'm using a cotton and hemp blended chambray. I made a note of how much extra to add to the front to create the front placket, and I'm placing the front panel that distance away from the edge of the fabric. Weighing the pattern down, and since the paper is thin, I'm marking around with the help of a ruler. Going around the whole pattern and using the ruler to add a 1cm seam allowance. The yoke pieces are placed on the bias for stretch, the collar on the straight grain with tiny weights that are useless and I should have just used my regular weights, and then we can start cutting things out. Like the pocket. And everything else. And now we finally get to... Now something not often mentioned with suit canvassing is that it actually reacts differently depending on the way that you bend it. So I have this example piece here and hopefully you can see the kind of vertical lines going through and that's the, the straight grain, what goes up and down traditionally on a suit jacket. And when you pinch it along that direction, it's very resistant to bending. It actually doesn't want to go flat. But when you bend it on the cross grain, the right to left, it actually folds flat really easily. And that's kind of like a nature of the canvassing that I wanted to take advantage of in this shirt. And I tried that previously with the shirt that I'm wearing right now, actually. And the only difference between this and the chambray was that the chambray one I pad stitched into place, kind of like baking in the curvature so that hopefully everything would kind of sit around or more naturally. And with this shirt, I was kind of hoping it would do the opposite. By having everything laid flat, I was hoping it could actually pull everything more open. So like the collar stand, for example, I was hoping would pull open a little bit more naturally. Whereas on the Chambray shirt, we can actually see like right at the front, it has that curvature, that like bending right at the front of the neck because pad stitching is a lot of extra work to put into a shirt collar. And it's actually interesting that it did work in the way that I kind of thought it would. I mean, I guess it seems weird to say that, that like it did the thing that I expected it to, but a lot of things in life don't tend to go my way. Canvas. I'm placing the collar on the straight grain with no seam allowance so that it has a nice roll and hopefully doesn't end up too floppy. Since there's no seam allowance, the canvas sits neatly inside the fabric like a flat little canvas pouch, 
The collar stand goes on the cross grain with the idea that it will make a nice round neck shape. Now time to count our pieces. One back piece, two front panels on the fabric edge, two sleeves, one on the fabric edge for no particular reason, four yokes cut on the bias, four cuff pieces, an old square placket design that I scrapped halfway through this project, two collar stand pieces, two collar pieces, and then canvassing for the collar stand and collar, two cuffs, and two pieces for the placket. Oh, and we can't forget the pocket. Now this vintage machine has a tiny work area, so I'm gonna use a book I've never read to fix that. Perfect. First, I'm sewing the pieces of the yoke together, and we can see that bias stretch in action. Then I'm going to gather the back panel so it fits into the smaller yoke. I'm passing a gathering thread across the top of the back. I'm not being all that careful with it, which will make the gathers a little irregular, but that's kind of what I like about some hand done work. You can, of course, be more careful with it if you choose to. Placing the yoke over top again so I know how much to shrink the back panel by, then distributing the gathers evenly and pinning them together in the center, which I marked on the back earlier so that the right and left halves would be even. Stitching them together and performing the fun task of picking out the gathering thread. To get the front panel into the yoke, I pulled it all through the neck and sandwiched the pieces together. I'm doing that again here by laying the front panel in the middle, between the yokes and then folding the seam allowances together, carefully pinching them before pulling them out through the neck, pinning and stitching together. I'm stitching the sleeves closed as well as the side seams. And look at that chain stitch. I think that's just beautiful. Then I'm fitting the sleeves into the armhole and matching the seams together before pinning them. Running a quick basting stitch to hold it all together, except for the part near the yoke, which, you guessed it, gets gathered up just like the back. This should help with the ease of movement by making the back shoulders stretchy and voluminous. And then stitching the armhole closed. Now finally we're starting the canvassing. I'm placing it inside the seam allowance of the cuff and stitching back and forth across the canvas, trying to catch as little of the chambray material as possible. I'm draping this over my hand so that the canvassing is constantly pulling away from the chambray and that by stitching it together it creates a natural curve. What I should have done though is started with the canvassing a little closer to one edge since it ended up a little bit more lopsided, or I could have started from the middle. Looks quite pretty though. We can see it looks pretty floppy when held like this. It's like, this is how the cuff naturally wants to fall, but if we flip it, it becomes pretty resistant to bending. And if I spread my fingers slightly, it holds itself open, like, almost flat. And that's so cool. I've, I've never seen anything that kind of did that before. And the cuffs in the collar hold themselves open really easily. It's quite bizarre to see how we can actually like look right through them. It's like the world's least structurally sound tunnel. Then I'm stitching the collar stand and collar together. Nice. So I'm just folding the seam allowance like roughly in half and catching right next to my stitch line. Quick stitch there and then one right at the top, quick stitch there. And I'm going pretty like fast and quick with it. I'm not really worried about it looking too nice because this will be on the inside. I'm just using this to create like that kind of bulge, that like swelled seam from the outside. There's ways that you can do this with like a serger, for example, where it'll kind of like allow you to pull one thread and it'll create a kind of roll. But I do like doing it by hand. I get to kind of control the, the width. I know sergers can be very specific in how much they'll let you actually roll over. And I do want this to be like very kind of like small and tight. Just pulling on the thread. And we create that nice kind of top, tight roll at the top. It's not gonna be like the, the nicest looking one. It is a little nicer across the top than it is across the curved areas, but it does the work that I need it to do. I just have a large safety pin in the collar here to see how it looks and it actually holds itself together like really nicely. It has a structure, but it bends and rolls nicely. Same with the cuff, which constantly rolls back on itself, creating that aggressive curve at the edges. It does look really cool, and I'm really happy with it. It's really unique. I've also put this locker loop at the back right under the collar. To connect the collar to the shirt, I'm lining them up and pinning them at the ends and in the center before stitching them closed, then filling the outseam by hand. 
Most shirt handwork I see is a felled seam, and I can see why. It's quite neat, and it hides some of the inconsistency of hand sewing. To finish the seams inside, I'm using the same rolled hem technique I demonstrated on the cuff, but this time I'm going back and forth between where the folded edge sits and only halfway across the fold to help push the roll through to the outside. Doing the same technique at the hem, which is where it's most often seen, and here we can see all the rolled edges I've done on the shirt, all across the bottom, up the sides, and we can see the chain stitch too, and into the arm. From the outside, we still see the roll, but only slightly, and it has a hand-done pick stitch appearance, like a series of dashed lines. And what's cool is, on the shoulder, since I tried to only catch the inside piece of the yoke when I was stitching it, the stitches just kind of disappear when going into the shoulder. Now it's time for the plackets. I've already basted the canvassing to the plackets. On the back, it's one centimeter away from the edge, but on the front, it's attached right to the edge. The back gets just folded over into a clean, flat seam, like so but the front gets folded under, and then the edge is enclosed in a small fold, and this creates that traditional folded placket front. First, I'm ironing down the seam allowance on the back or interior placket, folding it again and ironing and basting it down. For the front or exterior placket, I'm uselessly trying to preserve the fabric edge by folding it over the canvas and tucking it in. It didn't really work folding it over again and ironing down before basting it closed. To finish the plackets, I'm using a back stitch, where each stitch goes into the fabric slightly before where it came out, which uses a little bit more thread and is also slightly stronger than your usual straight stitch. Also, the tension makes the visible stitches even smaller, making for a very strong yet very subtle stitch. But from the back, we can see all the slightly longer stitches, a little less clean, but we're not going to worry about that. I'm doing the same thing for the front placket, twice. And once all the basting stitches are removed, we can see that it unfolds into the traditional front placket we all know and love. From the back, we can see a couple of those fabric edge pieces sticking out. Not my cleanest work, probably would have been better to just cut them off, but it doesn't really make a difference. Ironed it flat, and then we are good to go. With the sleeve placket, I'm using a more traditional style than the one I scrapped earlier. I mark the center line on the placket and on the sleeve, and I'm stitching a box around the center line. I did this by hand, but I probably didn't need to. Cutting along the center line and forming a triangle at the end for some clean folding before turning the sleeve right side out and folding the placket out. I then stitched each side down with a back stitch. I stitched a straight angle into the top rather than a point. I saw it once and I just kind of liked it. It looks pretty good. Can't really see it on camera though, but there's a stitch that follows the outside that looks kind of like a trapezoid, and that makes me happy. I'm going to put gathers into the cuffs as well, kind of like the shirt I have on now. It serves less of a practical purpose than the back and sleeve head, but I suppose it's in keeping with the overall aesthetic. Same as before, gather, stitch down, by hand this time for no particular reason, and then fell the outside while laying out on my carpet. Again, for no particular reason. Looks pretty good. Then the pocket, which is angled slightly for ergonomics. I gathered the corners to make it a little easier to fold back, and then backstitch the top closed. Then I attach it to the body with a backstitch, although a felling stitch probably would have been easier. For buttonholes, I stab through the fabric with these sharp manicure scissors to create an opening before widening it with a different pair of scissors, and then I stitch it together by hand. I've done a lot of these, so I don't want to show all the detail, but the stitch is the same as the eyelet at the collar, First, I created a hole with the leather all to stretch out the fibers without punching a hole through it. Then, I'm securing the thread on the bottom side and bringing it up through the fabric. For the buttonhole stitch, with the right side up, I'm leading the needle through the hole, up from the back around half a centimeter away from the hole, and wrapping the thread around the needle, pulling it tight for each stitch. Repeat all around the eyelet, widening again with the awl as necessary. And for buttonholes, I just do the same thing, but in like a rectangle instead of a circle. I think it looks really good. A little less good from the back though. Okay, but let's talk about the details of the shirt. Now, the canvassing, kind of the, the core of this whole project, um, I think it turned out really well. I don't know that I would need to do the pad stitching in the future. It is a lot of work, a lot of hand work, and as nice as it looks and as nice as it feels, I know that I get most of the way there by just having it held in by the stitching around like the edge of the collar and cuffs. In terms of the rolled hem at the bottom of the shirt, that's an interesting one for me actually, because before having started sewing, I definitely recognized the rolled hem as like one of the, the peak, like pinnacle 
um, accomplishments in shirt making. I'd look at a, a shirt that had a rolled hem and I'd be like, that is a quality dress shirt. That has like the handwork that makes it. No, I don't know if I actually think that way anymore. Um, no one sees it. Uh, I definitely am the kind of person that appreciates all the effort that goes into something, even if you don't end up seeing it. The rolled hem for me though is one that's interesting because it's it's literally destined to never be shown. I like the fact that I put effort into it and that makes it valuable to me, but otherwise I don't I don't know that I agree um, that the rolled hem is realistically as much as as we can kind of make it out to be. The big win for me, detail wise for this, is the swelled edges um, and the swelled seams. I think like. In the collar and the cuffs, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but like when you feel it, it is like this thick tactile bump. And I know that sounds really weird to say. I don't know how else to describe it, but man, it, it feels nice. It gives the shirt some character in a way, um, like not even just visually, but like in the way that it feels. And I think one of the things for me is that I've always been in love with the way clothing can kind of feel interesting in your hands. You know, you can show as much as you want on camera, but the way that this roll feels between my fingers, it's not like anything else. And I think that is like the big favorite detail um, that I've done. I really want to try incorporating it into other things in the future. Uh, it's my first time trying it actually. Uh, I don't think I would necessarily need to do the rolled hem internally and then do the stitching on the outside i think i could probably get away with doing the stitching on the outside or even like a much simpler stitch on the inside just to kind of hold it in place and i think i'm going to try doing that in the future one with a little bit less a little less effort and i think the amount of effort that goes into a detail is not indicative of its quality you know so this is one of the details that i showed to the tailors back when i worked in retail and they said oh that's actually really easy and i do agree it's it's quite easy, but I think the value it brings to a, to an end product can be astronomical. Definitely a situation for me that is like greater than the sum of its parts. And that goes for the like the side seams and the sleeve seams as well, which have like that rolled hem pit stitch look. I think they really add something to the look. So really interesting thing, um, a side effect that I didn't actually um, anticipate was for the armhole here, because I did that rolled seam as well, and you pull it tight with each stitch, it actually pulled the armhole tighter. So I can actually like feel, even though it's the almost exact same pattern as the, the navy shirt, maybe a little bit wider, but like I can feel how much tighter the armhole is, um, especially compared to the area around it. Like you can feel that the armhole is visibly gathered in on itself and made a little bit tighter. And I like the way that that feels. The fact that the seam's a little bit chunky um, really kind of, although it's tight, makes it feel stable and secure. And although I did use cotton thread, so theoretically if I worked too hard I could rip through this shirt, um, I don't think I will because uh, the yoke at the back, the cut on the bias yoke and the gathers at the sleeves really helps to make this shirt feel mobile. Um, I don't know how, like, everyone's opinion is different on how trim a shirt is. I don't know how all you out there would think how tight this is. But I will say it it feels uh, feels very mobile. Um, I like how trim it looks. I think this to me is like an ideal um, slimness for a shirt. I don't like shirts that are like too, too big, but I don't want ones that are like restrictively tight either. I kind of like to have them as slim as possible, but still, you know, mobile. And that, that that's a, a decent amount actually. So like I have some shirts that like look really baggy, but they can feel really restrictive. That's a big thing for me in shirt making is like making it feel comfortable in a way that's baked into the design and not just by making the whole thing looser or making it with stretch fabric. Maybe the chambray with pin collar thing is what makes it stand out to a lot of people, but for me, I feel good in it. And I think that's a lot. You know, I think that connection that we can have with our clothing to not just make us look good, but feel good, I think that's waves bigger and more important to me than any brand name or any visually striking detail, any like kind of eye-catching thing to me is, is feeling good in your clothing, you know? Maybe that sounds cheesy. I don't know. I like it. <laughs>